You're watching HuffPost Live. I'm Nancy Red, and the saying goes that losing weight is only half the battle, and it's certainly true for our guest today. Not only is there the mental component of resizing one's outlook after losing hundreds of pounds, but one's physical journey is often far from over, with a different kind of body battle caused by extreme amounts of excess skin. Joining us now to share what no one really talks about when it comes to dramatic weight loss, but what's a huge issue that deserves a conversation, we have a great panel, starting with Greg McBride. He's the author of Weightless, My Life as a Fat Man and How I Escaped. He inspired this conversation today. We also have Paul Mason, who lost over 600 pounds. He's currently in the hospital recovering from skin removal surgery. And we have Dr. Jennifer Kapla, the director of Body Contouring Surgical and Medical Associates, who performed Paul's surgery. Thank you, everyone. I'm really excited about this conversation. Paul, I have to start with Boy. you. Just days ago, you had this huge life-changing surgery. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm getting there, thank you. Every day seems um, a nearer step to my... Um life journey you know it's definitely improving now when you dropped all this weight did you know that you'd have to go under the knife to remove all the skin was this something people told you about that you thought about no it's definitely um wasn't um on the agenda uh, you know um, when the weight started coming off um i um did notice there was a lot of extra skin but i thought like most people do that once I'd be able to exercise and um, get down to the gym, start walking more, then, yeah, that would um, that would go away and tighten up. But, uh, no. And it's just so complicated. You lost over 600 pounds. How much excess skin did they actually remove from your body just now? Well, this um, first operation, there was um, about 50 pounds of um the skin it had to be, you know, it's got to be done in stages. I need some other operations done, but um, that was um, probably a bit heavier than that because Jennifer and her team were unable to capture a lot of the fluid what came away. So it was between 50 and 60 pounds. What were some of the challenges of having the excess skin? Obviously, you're still recovering, so you can't really talk about. Uh, what a relief it's been not to have it, but what were some of the things that all of these almost 100 pounds of excess skin uh, that it kept you from being able to do? Well, it's kept um, my mobility was quite limited. The, um, it was very draining on my um, body. It, um, you know, I used to have to wear really baggy clothes to what my actual size was to get over to feel comfortable. Also, it um, you know limited my my daily life, um, and it kept getting infected. That was the worst side of um, uh, having the excess skin infections, which um, caused me to be feel unwell. Well, we wish you a healthy recovery. We can't wait to talk to your doctor about figuring out uh, why this happens, why no one talks about it. But, Greg, I want to bring you into this conversation because your journey uh, really inspired this conversation. You had surgery to remove excess skin years ago. Well, not to this extent. Talk to us about what was going on with your body. Talk to us how much weight you love, what happened with the skin, and how it impacted your life. Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a journey, and I'm so inspired by the other guests today. Um, because this is a conversation that needs to be had. I uh, weighed over 450 pounds when I graduated from college. In fact, here is a picture of me at my heaviest. And uh, Wait, see, like Greg, you got to lift it all the way up. We just saw a head. Okay. There all right, there you go. There, there we go. Okay. I'm, I'm, anyway, um, I, too, had to deal with excess skin afterwards. And I waited a few years because um, I kept thinking that it would actually go away. And instead, much as with the other guests, it was something that was persistently there. In fact, I was finally fitting into clothes that I could buy at a you know, normal clothing store. Going into the Gap was a huge accomplishment for me. But I always had these little poofs and bulges. And like the other guests, I was uh, going through a lot of powder having to you know, keep these areas dry because I literally had these folds of skin. And I would even notice that when I would walk or run or even dance, <laughs> that's me before the skin surgery, um, that I would hear swooshes, like you could hear like waves rolling in, and it was my body making a noise. So even though I'd had this incredible success, I was still sort of haunted by the skin. And so I ended up uh, putting the surgery on credit cards. Insurance wouldn't cover it. Uh, I found a great doctor, uh, much like the one that we have here as a guest today. 
And, you know, he worked with me and my budget and we actually took off most of the skin all at once. You can still sort of see the scars. Um, if you can, there's a scar right here from my upper arms and I have scars on my chest and they've gotten better over time, but much like some of the stretch marks that are still there, you know, there's still evidence. And uh, so you never quite get to that after picture that you maybe imagined for yourself. And yet um, having the skin taken away, I had over a yard and a half cut off you do feel such a freedom and it is such an uplift and it's something that you will feel, uh, you know, years from now, the, the other guests that will feel it. But I will say that it is a grueling, grueling surgery. And the well, actually, I want to talk to you that. about that surgery. And I want to say, here's the thing. You say you won't ever get that after picture. But you have a pretty great after picture. And again, when we talk about weight loss, whether it's 10 pounds or 1,000 pounds, the mentality uh, is really what matters, right? It's about what's going on in your mind and appreciating what you have. One of the interesting things Absolutely. about you, you mentioned the surgery. You did not have weight loss surgery. You lost all of this weight uh, without surgery. So for you, was the idea of, okay, well, once I've lost these couple hundred pounds, I'm going to have to get surgery to remove skin. Was this ever part of a conversation you had with yourself? Was this someone anyone warned you about that you'd need to be thinking about or saving money for? You know, I did not save money for it. It was always something that I was kind of aware of because, you know, I knew how heavy I was. I mean, I was, I have had a size 60 inch waist. In fact, I'll hold up another visual this time higher. This is my old belt. This is 60 inches. It goes on and on and on. And uh, so I knew that at that size, that it was likely that I was going to, you know, have some excess skin. I tried to live with it for years. Again, I didn't think that I could afford the surgery. You know, it was considered cosmetic surgery, not something that was necessary to my health. Uh, but I finally decided that for my mental health, I was going to do it. And again, I did it with with credit cards. And, uh, you know, it's that whole thing of uh, it, it's a journey. And you know what? It's still a journey. Even now, I've kept the weight off. I lost over 250 pounds of excess weight and I've kept it off for over a decade. But I have to think about it every day of my life. You know, I still love ice cream as much as ever. I still, you know, would prefer potato chips to celery. I'm very human in that way. But you know what? It feels good to be in my skin now, even with some of it removed. <laughs> and, you know, it's that old saying that nothing tastes as good as being thin feels. And also, too, keeping things like my before picture in the belt and things like that. And even the scars, you know, they, they're not scars as much as they are uh, medals of honor. Well, yeah, Paul, it's interesting that uh, what Greg is saying, he was like, look, you know, I've kept this weight off, I've done all this. Uh, it's been 10 years now. He financed his surgery on a credit card. You're from England. Uh, there's the NHS. Doctors refused to perform this skin removal surgery on you for a pretty specific reason, which I find very interesting. Talk to us about that. Yes, it's um, a social uh, welfare system in the in the UK, and um, they kept chain, turning down my funding request to have the extra skin removed, and they rather just um, kept me in the situation I was in, where I was kept getting infections, I was needing help. And caregivers, and I just wanted to get on with things. And um, they said to me, "Well, we need your weight stabilised." And I thought, "Yeah, fair enough. I can see the reason why I need to stabilise and everything." But in my situation, it was a little bit more extreme than other people. And, and my case was then that um, I wanted to mobilise to get more mobile. I couldn't do that without the skin being removed. So, yeah, that was so frustrating. It really was. And um, I, I look back on that now and I think, well, I'm glad that, um, you know, I took Jennifer's um, help. <clears throat> And I'm glad that you took her help as well. We'll talk a little bit about her later. Uh, but how do you feel, what do you think is going to be the first thing you do once you're fully recovered, uh, once you're out of the bed, once you are you actually get to feel the literal weightlessness of having the skin removed? Oh, yes. it's. Um, I have been out of bed a few times now and um, been to walk through steps. And um, today I walked um, actually out the room and down the corridor a little way and it feels like I'm moving the, my leg, especially my right leg, where Jennifer removed 22 pounds off there. It feels like I'm lifting a um, thin little piece of paper at the moment, whereas before it was just felt like a tree trunk. And um, 
yeah, the, the rest of um, the areas where she removed the skin, no doubt as soon as um, everything settles down and I'm not and I'm not quite so painful, then um, I shall have more sensation there. And but yeah, I can sense it already. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, as soon as I'm home or as soon as I'm able to, is, um, take, go out with a walk with Rebecca, my fiance. You know, just normal thing what you tend to do in life, and I've been unable to do that. And it's very exciting to see this journey in progress. It's amazing to think that you were once the world's fattest man, uh, heaviest man, and then yeah. here you are in this part of your, your recovery. And Jennifer, uh, also known as Dr. Kaplow, we appreciate you being here. Paul speaks very highly of you. Our audience is, is fascinated right here, Janet R. That's amazing weight loss, and I think we can refer to both Greg and Paul regarding this statement right here. But when we're talking about extreme weight loss, how common is this issue? We have Greg and Paul both talking about tremendous amounts of excess skin that uh, while Greg anticipated it, perhaps uh, Paul didn't necessarily know how much of an impact it would have on mobility, on life, on, on physique. Is this a common experience for individuals who lose large amounts of weight? Unfortunately, it is a common experience. So first of all, congratulations, obviously, Greg, I, the first time I'm meeting you, but um, it's a, it is a huge journey. And I think that um, the majority of people have no idea uh, what the weight loss will do to their bodies. And the reason they don't really have an idea is because it's not predictable. Why somebody loses 200 pounds and has tons of excess skin and another person does but doesn't, is very hard to predict. So I think that that in and of itself is a reason why um, why nobody really knows the answer and why people don't know what to expect. Because even as someone on the other side that who sees it repeatedly over and over for patients, the predictability is low. And uh, it's not age, it's not how you lost the weight, how long it took to loss the weight, whether it was surgery or diet and exercise, none of those things ultimately predict how much loose skin you're going to have and what quality skin you're going to have. All right, so it's hard to predict, but is there a, a physical reason for this phenomenon? Uh, once the individual has shown to have the personal capacity to have excess skin, is there a, a, a physical aspect to this? Like, a, a, Are cells larger? Is skin more... Uh, yeah, so it's a great question. I mean, the skin had to stretch to accommodate the size of the patient. So at some point in time, it had to stretch. Do so you think of it in terms of a pregnancy? We stretch, but we come back. Why do we come back in pregnancy and not in weight gain? So people, even in, in those circumstances, when they gain weight for significant periods of time and not just a short period, you will see that it does stay with them. And so um, the body's ability to retract that skin is based on the elasticity that they have. So the number of fat cells are fixed, whether they're big or small, uh, doesn't make the difference. The fact that the skin had to accommodate the larger intestine, the larger abdomen, the fat in the legs or whatever it is, that is the nature when it's gone, that that skin, depending on its elasticity, how much of it will retract and how much of it will drop. Now in Greg's case and in Paul's case, obviously in different countries, each time insurance would not cover this surgery. Why is this considered elective when it obviously impacts mobility? I mean, it's a great question. It's something we've been dealing with for a long time now. And the truth is, I think the ultimate answer is that there, there is some coverage for this, uh, particularly like a paniculectomy. When you go and you remove the hanging panis, that apron of skin, if you meet the appropriate criteria. So each insurance company has their own policy and what they ultimately will cover and will not. But skin, uh, sort of skin that hangs below the genitalia, um, over, so overhangs the genitalia, uh, excess weight loss of greater than 100 pounds, intertriginous rashes that are not treated um, with prescription creams for a certain period of time, those are general criteria. So an insurance company may end up covering a portion, but when it comes to arms and legs and contouring the chest and those things, a lot of times there isn't coverage. And I think ultimately the reason is for an insurance company in particular is it has to cost has to be cost effective for them. So why do they cover bariatric surgery? Because ultimately you're talking about years of vascular problems, heart problems, diabetes, hypertension, all these things. So they're saving money, right? By right, but here's the, this is the irony, Greg, way in here. Because, so when you got this excess skin removed, the problem is, okay, you've gone through all this effort. You've put in all this um, tremendous heart, 
energy, time to lose all this weight. You left with this hanging skin that still affects your mobility and your self-esteem. Talk about how that can also create a cycle where you still don't feel good about yourself and actually in some ways can reverse a lot of the hard work that weight loss surgery or uh, your diet and exercise routine might provide. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it all comes down to shame and, you know, our self-worth. And that's why one thing I try and do when people find out that I've lost weight, whether, you know, it's about getting rid of the excess skin or just taking the weight off, is you really have to love yourself. You know, as dieters, as people with excess skin, we think, oh, I'll love myself then after that happens. But we've got to sort of embrace that self-worth along the way because it is, there's so much shame and I remember that, you know, people would sometimes say, what's that noise? You know, if I'm out, if we were out dancing or something like that. And I knew good and well, it was the sound of my thighs, you know, going back and forth. If there happened to be a quiet moment, that would be the sound. And so it was awful. I remember, you know, I talk about my book. There was one time on Thanksgiving, everyone was wondering what the sound was. I'd been being silly and, you know, dancing along with the parade on the TV. And I actually ran into the to the bathroom and I kind of likened it to being Frankenstein's monster running away from the crowd because, you know, I felt that shame. I felt like, you know, I there here I had lost 250 pounds of, of excess weight and yet I still had the skin. I still had the stretch marks. And so, you know, it really is about self-esteem because, of course, after you lose the weight, even after you get the excess skin cut away, if you choose to do that, you still have to maintain it. And you're still the same person on the inside, you know, no matter what we do to our chest, our bellies, whatever it is, the overhang over our groin, um, it's the head, the head takes care of it all. And so it really comes down to self-worth and self-love. And I'm sure that's why, you know, the other guest got partly that surgery too, as well as all the medical ailments. He's had this tremendous success and now wanted to take it to that next step. And so it's, you know, letting go of that shame, being okay with the scars that are left over. And, you know, as our other guests will tell you too, there's a lot involved with skin reduction surgery. This is, even if you decide to do it, even if you're lucky enough to have your insurance partially cover it, it the recovery time is awful. I mean, it's, you know, you basically do have to learn to walk again. And it's, it's a very strange phenomenon. So it's really something to consider and think about. And as I'm sure the doctor will say too, it's, you know, it's a big surgery. And so you want to be as healthy as possible in order for your for your body to, you know, do well before, during, and after the surgery. Paul, talk about that. Then Dr. Kaplan, I'd love for you to, to join in. What are you expecting? You just had this surgery literally days ago. You've just lost almost 100 pounds of skin and fluid and, and everything in the mix of that. We have a question from Janet R. What was the recovery period like after the surgery? You can actually talk to us as you're going right through it. What's it like? How do you feel? Have you taken any steps? Oh, yes, I've been um, every day. The first day after the surgery, um, I attempted to get out of bed. I managed to get out of bed. I stood up with the physiotherapy team and I took three steps forward and three steps back and that was it. Then I realized the next day I felt a little bit stronger. So I walked to across the room with the physiotherapy team, turn around, come back again. And then I always set this goal that I'm going to do double the next day. So the next day, it was done it twice and then managed to get to the bathroom as well. And then the third, the third day was three times yesterday. And now the fourth day, um, as I say, it's going to be four times today. It's going to be a lot further. And um, that drives me on because... Um, you know, there's no point in um, Jennifer doing her surgery without my participation. So um, that drives me on and gets me there. But going back to what Greg was saying about um, funding the operation, that was the main obstacle that um, when Jennifer um, touched out to me and offered her services, that how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to get me there? You know, over to the States. I was in the UK then and... Um, so we set up a uh, fundraising page on youcaring.com and it's helped Paul complete his extraordinary journey because if it wasn't for the um, lovely American people and people around the world, really, that have donated um, their spare funds, that a lot of this wouldn't have been possible. We have it right here uh, where people donated to your YouCaring site to help you get to 
America, you with your wonderful fiance right here. Um, and here's where it's just Paul completing his extraordinary journey. All of the news generally is like, world's fattest man, Paul Mason, ready for New York surgery. Do you think that the stigma of uh, having been the world's fattest man, having been known as this individual, is what kind of made them think, you know what? I don't know if we can trust this guy. I don't know if we should give him this skin removal surgery because he probably doesn't gain it right back. Do you think there's a stigma uh, against your, in, your uh, initiative and capacity to keep this weight off that might have lent to you having to come to the States and Dr. Kaplan to be so generous? Well, it's not the case of, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be here for good now. I want to live here with my fiance and get married and settle down, make a new life. And I don't really care what they think back in the UK because that's the old part of me which is no longer there. And um, yeah, there probably was a bit of doubt in a few minds of the officials um, who dealt with my initial case. But um, that's all in the past now. That's um, long gone. I've moved on, and uh, I've just got the future to look forward to. And the future really is what I make of it. So, I love it. Dr. Kapla, he said he doesn't want any part of him to be back in the UK. Maybe you can mail the excess skin <laughs> back <laughs> yeah, there that you took absolutely. off. That might be pretty expensive because it's quite a lot. Uh, so on that note, what happens is many people think, okay, look, well, what if they just do it again? What are you seeing with your patients? Uh, are, are they like Greg, who has uh, been so successful, has written a book, has kept the weight off, has the scars to show for, but they're a lot smaller than uh, the skin was? Do people generally keep the weight off after such an intensive surgery? So I think that a couple of things. So it's definitely been proven that patients who have lost the weight and then have plastic surgery have a significant uh, decreased rate of recidivism. So they do not gain the weight back um, once they've invested in themselves. So whether it's monetarily, physically, all the things that go into surgery um, are a big deal. Now, I will say that in general, a couple of the interesting things are people have gone, I mean, to have lost 650 pounds, I don't think any one of us can possibly imagine such a thing, right? So he's gone on such an incredible journey and his is an extreme case, but for Greg too, it's not just, I think people need to appreciate, it's not just weight loss. This is ultimately a journey. So putting themselves in a mindset, having changed their life and taken control, okay? The excess skin and having plastic surgery is kind of like just a finale on that journey. It's getting rid of that stigmata of what they carried around and the life that they had in the past. I have had patients say to me, when I looked in a mirror when I was heavy, I, I never, it never bothered me. But after I lost the weight and I looked in that mirror, that's when it hurt. And that's when I was unhappy. And that's when I didn't like what I saw. So I think it's a very interesting thing because most people I think would never think that mm -hmm. um, and unless you've been on that journey. So I think the weight gain, weight loss is really someone taking control of their life ultimately and having come full circle. And so they put that other life behind them. And the surgery is just finally their last stage to really get to that point where they feel, you know, sort of back back human again, back to normal, back to somebody that they now feel is the person they were striving to be. But it's still scary. Uh, Greg, uh, you've been through it, you've survived, you've lived to tell the tale, not only verbally, but in print. What is your advice, not only to Paul, who's who's in it, he was brave, he, he got the surgery, he was lucky to meet Dr. Kapla, uh, but to other individuals who are wondering if they should pursue this, if, if it's something that is for them, if it's worth putting a fundraiser out, maxing out a credit card, or utilizing savings. Well, you know what? It's a very personal journey, and it's, it's not a decision to be made overnight. I mean, I love what the doctor was saying, because I remember, you know, I hated having man boobs, but after I lost the weight, I hated having saggy man boobs. So, you know, that it turns out that was worse. So I actually, you know, that was one of the things that, that brought me to the surgery. But, you know, I had had, I had lost the weight about three years earlier, and so that, that was part of the journey that the doctor is talking about and that Paul can relate to. And so it really, it's a very individual journey. And I was so blessed to find a great plastic surgeon who not only worked with me financially, but was very realistic about the scars. Paul's obviously been very lucky to find his surgeon as well. And so interview lots of doctors, find someone you trust because, you know, surgery, you're putting, putting your life in their hands, but you also want to find somebody that's realistic. And again, we never know how the surgery will go. You know, back to my man boobs. I remember that, uh, you know, my nipples had to be cut away then the skin cut away. They put the nipples back. And for a while, my nipples were like Pong, like before they finally settled. And psychologically, it was really tough to go through. 
And so for me, I could have gone back to food. Like that's what I would rely on to get me through those difficult moments. So again, you really want to be in a place of self-worth. You want to feel good about yourself and you want to look forward to the future, just like Paul's doing with his fiance and over here. And also we have a surprise announcement. Paul and I are actually joining Chippendales now that we both look so good. So uh, we will be touring this, bump, this summer. Bump, bump. I'm excited. Uh -huh. I can't wait to see you all. Paul, uh, as Greg mentioned, we are excited about your upcoming nuptials. We'd love to have you and your fabulous fiance, Rebecca, on sometime because her part of the journey is quite interesting as well. We appreciate you joining from the hospital bed. We wish you well in your recovery. Dr. Kapla, thank you for all the work that you've done. And Greg, thank you as well. We appreciate everyone Thanks, sharing their stories with us. You can read more about all of our amazing guests as well as Greg's book, Weightless, My Life as a Fat Man and How I Escaped, by clicking on the links in our resource well below. So do that and then stay here because the conversation always continues here at HuffPost Live.